Alrighty, everyone, we are joined on the dais by Ole Miss head coach Mike Bianco, first baseman Tim Elko, and pinch, pitcher Hunter Elliott. If you've got a question for coach or either of the student athletes, please use the hand raise function on Zoom. We'll defer to uh, gentlemen and ladies in the room. We'll start with an opening statement from coach, and then we'll go into questions. Coach, go ahead. Uh, just, you know, I thought it was a tremendous baseball game, and, uh, you know, on both sides. I thought both sides played really well. Uh, a type of baseball game that you don't see much, the, you know, these days, especially in college baseball. Uh, you know, two one game, and uh, of course, you know we knew we were going to have our hands full with uh, with their lefty left hander. But just proud of our guys for hanging in there. Uh, proud of Hunter. Uh, it, it certainly wasn't his best day, uh, but the results were terrific. He just hung in there, and uh, don't know many freshmen <clears throat> that uh, can can handle what he handled today. And uh, you know what I just said, and Brad Henderson, our radio guy, asked. Uh, and it's true to have success. I think, especially in postseason, your your stars have to show up and uh, and have to play well. Uh, but you need help from some other guys, maybe not your headliners. And uh, you know, through the past two days, we've had that. But certainly in the seventh inning, with Bench, you know, Gonzo and Elko coming to the plate, where we didn't have a really good offensive day at all. You know, we get three really good at bats from them to win the baseball game. Thank you very much, Coach. If you have a question, again, please use the hand raise button on Zoom and use it early, but we'll start in the room. Hunter, you were battling from the beginning. Just kind of what let you keep fighting in those bases loaded situations and runner on second, no out situations like that? Uh, just really trusting my stuff. Uh, Coach B always tells me I, my stuff's good enough to compete anywhere uh, against anybody. So uh, that's really just what stuck in my head that entire time. And... Uh, yeah, I was battling, couldn't find the fastball, couldn't find the slider, change up anything early, but uh, that's what makes uh, starting sometimes hard is you can just continue to go and uh, you have three, four innings to figure it out and uh, in the fifth I, I kind of figured it out and started to figure it out late. I think you're nine for nine getting guys out with the bases loaded this year. Just, is there anything on your mind when that's happening or are you just like, what, how do you process that? Now, throw strikes. Uh, you can't walk people with the bases loaded or else <laughs> give up a run. Uh, that's the biggest thing. That's really all I'm thinking. Pound the zone. Tim, you've obviously been here before, had those big hits before. Just when you see Bench and Gonzo get up, are you expecting fastball? Are you going up there trying to ambush? Just kind of what's the approach there? Uh, I mean, my approach is always looking fastball and then Justin. So, um, you know, I. They try to ice me a little bit and, you know, go talk to the, the pitcher before, but, uh, you know, just stuck with my approach and, um, you know, I was a little fired up after JB and Gonzo had those, those good at bats. So, um, you know, it's got a good pitch to hit and put a good swing on it. It's back to back days. The offense has put it together late. Just what is allowing you guys to stay in there and even if you're struggling early, keep your heads up late? You just got to stick with it. Um, you know, it, they had a, you know, hats off. Their pitcher just pitched really well today. Um, their starters, uh, is really good, um, you know, he's making it uh, tough on our lefties and, you know, even our righties as well. So uh, he's a really good pitcher, so hats off to him. But, um, you know, hats off to our guys, too, for just sticking with it. And, um, you know, when that opportunity comes to get those runs, uh, we were able to do it. Like, I think it was seven and a third with 11 Ks from true freshmen today. Just the way those guys were able to step up in their first ever postseason outing, just how impressive is that for somebody? Yeah, like, yeah. you know, uh, you're right, Nick. And, uh, you know, I don't know how many – Guys could have gotten through the first, like uh, you know Hunter, you know Hunter did. Uh, true freshman, it looked like it was the script, right? And freshman uh, playing on the road in a regional against the number one seed and wasn't going to be able to handle it. At least that's what it looked like, you know, through the first, you know, three hitters. Uh, but uh, he handled it, and yeah, you know, it's one of the reasons that he's special. It's one of the reasons he's had so much success this year. Is uh, he doesn't let the inning blow up on him. Um, you know, uh, we, I wish we could bottle it up. He, he couldn't really answer. I wish we could bottle it up and, and give it to other people. But, you know, certainly, you know, I think, think that was certainly the difference in the, in the, in the day, especially early. And then uh, Nichols, who's, as you know, and you've seen us, has pitched, you know, well, especially the second half, maybe the last month. Uh, but, uh, and he's been in some moments, you know, in, in SEC play, but not as many as, as Hunter and not as many certainly as, as BJ. Uh, but to watch him do that against, you know, what we consider a really good offense, uh, you know, to, to just continue to put some outs on the board and give us a chance uh, or, you know, what you know, Tim you know, does really is, 
you know, and, uh, you know, not even really any topic at this point if, if Mason doesn't do what he does. You brought in Brandon there for Morales. Do you say anything to him before Marquee at bat like that, or do you just kind of let him do his thing? Just tell them, you know, maybe some pitch, pitch sequences and how, how we want to attack them. Um, and I think it's tough uh, for, for a few reasons. One, you have a closer, it's very emotional, game's on the line. You're facing, you know, arguably their best player, one of the best players in the country, and you're facing the middle of the lineup. Uh, but, you know, I think sometimes if you can just t t talk about how we're going to attack them, what's the scouting report, you know, it gets them a little more locked in, especially somebody with BJ who's got, you know, really overpowering stuff and sometimes can get adrenalized. So, really, that was only the only message. How's TJ's hand? Um, able to play, but obviously, you know, bothered him. You know, at, uh, you know, one of those where, you know, he kind of gutted it out today. Uh, I don't know if it's one of those things where it gets better every day or, or he just needs rest. Uh, uh, we were thankful to get him in the lineup today, but you could tell, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, that obviously it was bothering him a little bit offensively and then the face pump was that, you know, is as good as anybody we've faced all year. Um, you know, that with, with a tough you know, hand, it probably wasn't a good mix. Got a few hands up on Zoom. We'll go first to Michael Katz. Michael, go ahead. Hey, Mike. Uh, you obviously just brought up BJ. Um, you know, he has had some hard moments this year, but this is the second night in a row that, you know, he, he really comes through for you guys. We, we, we know about the stuff and how electric it can be, but just how important is, is resiliency to what makes BJ so good? Well, I think it, uh, resiliency, uh, short memory, whatever you want to say, as a closer, you have to have that because let's face it, you know, you usually only get the ball, you know, and, and let, you know, uh, uh, you only get the ball if the game's on the line. And, uh, and so sometimes if you don't make a pitch, it's different as even Hunter, I think was alluding to, if you're a starter, you give up a run, you know, you, you're going to be okay as long as you get some outs and, you know, get a little deeper in the game. If you're a closer, sometimes you blow the save. Uh, you're right. Uh, he's, he's been resilient. He's been able to handle it, you know, like all the great closers that we've ever had uh, and, you know, super dominant stuff. And he's one of the great things about him is, like, he was even better today, I thought, stuff-wise. You know, I thought, you know, the, the layoff probably affected him more than anything last night. We didn't talk about it because it was 2.30 in the morning last night but um, it probably affected him more because he's used to getting up and getting hot just about every game, and, you know, he really hadn't pitched in a while. We'll go next to Austin Eldridge. Austin, go ahead. Hey, Hunter, specifically for you, you play in the SEC, obviously, which is some tough environment. Specifically this year, you pitched at Baum Walker and Alex Box and pitched very well. Do you think playing in environments like that in the SEC can help you in situations like this where the crowd's trying to get into it and get kind of raucous in the postseason? Absolutely. Uh, I don't know if there's a tougher crowd than Ball Marker for sure. Uh, but yeah, uh, the SEC battle tests you. Even even places like Kentucky and uh, other places that we play on the road, they, they get after you and uh, it definitely prepares you for road environments like this. Got a couple more hands up. We'll go to Chris Muller from the Rebel Walk. Chris, go ahead. Can you give us a brief history of the phrase, don't let the Rebs get hot, and how you've used it with your teammates? Uh, it's kinda, it just kind of came up whenever we uh, started started our little run there towards the end of the season. Uh, I don't know, it kind of just came out of nowhere. Uh, I was feeling it in the moment, and uh, then it kind of just started a thing. So, uh, you know, I guess just don't let the Rebs get hot. And last hand up we have on Zoom is Cam Dyer. Cam, go ahead. Hey, Hunter, when you're battling another pitcher like Palmquist, I mean, just throwing up zeros after zeros, does that motivate you even more to go out there? or Does that fire you up just to try to keep giving your team a chance? It fires you up a little bit, uh, but yeah, you can't really think about what the other guy's doing. You just got to focus every pitch and try and put up zeros yourself. Uh, I knew our offense was going to get to him or the next guy at some point, so I uh, just had to give him a chance. Yeah. Susan? Hey, hi, Tim. I don't know if anybody asked you this, but um, the, uh, you were really pounding your chest there, and that was a very emotional scene. Um, what were you feeling at that minute, um, and what was it like seeing your guys get really amped up outside uh, the dugout? Um, you know, it's for moments like that, uh, that's what you play for, you know, um, just to see your teammates getting fired up with you. and. Um, 
you know, that's what makes playing this game so fun is mo moments like that. Um, so, uh, you know, I was just feeling a lot of, a lot of different emotions, just happiness and um, all those kinds of things. So uh, just, just really makes you feel good when uh, you help the team win and uh, you see how much it fires up everybody on the, uh, uh, in the dugout. Just your overall feeling now, and how tough was this game? It was, you know. Yeah. Just, you know, I thought it was a hell of a baseball game, and you know, it's you heard it sounds cliche, but you know, it's a shame somebody had to lose it, right? Because I thought both teams played really, really well, uh, and you know, we just happened to put an inning together, uh, get three, you know, uh, our three stars came to the plate and and had really good at bats, and uh, but I thought, you know, it was. Uh, Airless game. Both both teams played really clean defensively. Uh, both staffs, uh, you know, theirs included, you know, pitched really really well. Uh, it was one of those baseball games that uh, you don't see a lot, you know, uh, these days. You know, usually there's there's a lot of homers and runs being scored and errors, and sometimes it can be a little sloppy. So uh, it was a, it was a great game. We're just you know excited that you know we played well enough to win it. Are you guys going to sit? In Going home now uh, we're, we're going. We're, yeah, we're going back uh, going to the hotel. To take a shower. Take some. What about you? Are you going to be watching? <laughs> no, I'll, I'll watch it on TV. You watch it, and if you should face Miami again, what, what do you expect out of them? Well, I think what we saw today and what we expected when we came down here. I mean, they're the ACC champs for a reason. They're really, really good. A the, the, lot of depth on the mound, you know. So I, I think you know if we were to face them. Uh, I don't necessarily think pitching's an issue for, for them playing an extra game. Uh, and the really good offense. We know, you know, and same with Arizona, though. I mean, uh, this is, uh, you know, one of those loaded regionals where I think when you look up, I mean, um, if it wasn't picked as some, some of the pundits out there that follow college baseball and write about it didn't, you know, some of them ranked it the number one, but I'm sure if it wasn't their number one, it may have been their number two or three and there's 16 of them. So, um, you know, just uh, it's tough to get through. We have one more question up and this will be the last one. Cam Dyer, go ahead one more time. Uh, yeah, coach, one win away from the Super Regionals. What's the message to the team and the mentality going into the game and possibly a couple of games tomorrow? Well, uh, you know, one of the things that we talked about is uh, – you, you, you play to win, you play to have success, and for the moments that these guys enjoyed today, and it was, he, Tim was just asked about his emotion. I mean, that's this is why you do all of this. So you want them to enjoy it. Uh, but the other message is to realize that, you know, we're not done yet, you know. Uh, nobody remembers, you know, a, lot, you know, a year later who was 2-0 and in a regional. It's only, you know, who won and, and moved on. And so the message is, you know, take care about your bodies tonight, to hydrate, to get some rest because, you know, we literally didn't go to bed to, you know, somewhere between 2.30 and 3 o'clock last night. Uh, and even though, uh, you know, we, we played at 3, you know, we, we ate at 11 and, you know, we're here taking BP at noon. So uh, kind of a quick turnaround. So uh, winning this, you know, gives them a chance to hydrate and uh, get to bed on time, get off their feet and, and hopefully be fresh and ready to go tomorrow. Great. Coach, guys, congratulations, and we'll see you tomorrow. Go get some rest. Thank Thanks you very much. Appreciate you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.